What's up, Spud Nation? Happy Tuesday to everybody. Hope you all had a great weekend and your week is going smoothly. Today we're going to be talking about Florida Gators softball. Plaques go Burris, out of prison. You Milwaukee Brewers fans, Brewers had two selections in the first round. Going to be talking about them. Also, a new coach in the NBA. And lo and behold, LeBron James. Here we go. We're going to get started. I'm going to be talking college softball. Florida Gators versus Arizona State University in the Women's College World Series. Florida Gators, as most of you know, I'm a huge Florida Gators fan. Love, love Megan Bush. Best player in the country. I love her. She's great. Been following her since she was a freshman. Go Gators. That's the reason I love the Florida Gators. And you know what? I am all for them. Pulling for the Gators, but they ran kind of into a buzzsaw uh, in game one. Arizona State beat them 14 to 4. And as most of you know, Florida lost to Arizona State earlier in the tournament. And lo and behold, folks, same rug doctor, carpet muncher, awesome umpire behind the plate as was in the game earlier in the tournament. Now, I'm not one to put off the blame, do whatever. It was a 14-4 game. That's a lot of runs. But, let me throw this huge butt out there. But when an umpire shrinks a strike zone from this big to this big, you got to feed him meat right down the plate. Hannah Rogers of Florida, it's so sad to see. The umpire just continued shrinking and shrinking and shrinking that strike zone until she had to put it on a plate for the Arizona State hitters. Arizona coming in, the number one overall seed, it really looks like the NCAA is pushing for them to win the title. I hope tonight there's a new umpire behind home plate, gives them a fair crack, opens up the strike zone, and allows Florida to have a great game with Arizona State. Go Gators! Get the win tonight. Take it to game three. I love it. Great, great softball action. Plexico Burris, welcome to the real world. You're out of prison. Served your time. Did your dues. You know what? Dude walked into a nightclub. Shot himself in the leg. What a moron. Plex, way to go, man. Hopefully you smartened up a little bit in prison. Right now, everyone's wondering, you're going to try the NFL again. I'm going to assume he doesn't have much else to fall back on. So, Plax, I hope you've been working your tail off. You know, not many athletes can just hop out of two years of retirement, two years sitting in the clink, and come out and be like, yeah, bring it on, dude. I'm ready to play in the NFL at a high level. We'll find out. Michael Vick is a rarity. He's a freak athlete. Plax, not sure you're on that athletic meh, podium, so to say, platform that Mr. Vick is. But you got a lot of teams excited. Right now it looks like the Rams, who are in desperate need of a big-time receiver. And, lo and behold, the Philadelphia Eagles. Andy Reid is all about giving people second opportunities. Now, you got to ask yourself this question. Is Plax ready? Is he ready to step in and help an NFL team right now? I guess we'll find out. That's what the workouts are for. That's what all that garbage is all about. I am all for giving people second chances, so Plax, do it up, man. Live the dream that not many people can reach. NFL, this is the peak of any football player's career, so do it up big, my man. Michael Vick showed what a little straight and arrow can lead to. Vick was a beast. Plax, let's see if you can do the same thing. Brewer fans, be very excited. Yesterday was the first round of the Major League Baseball draft, and the Brewers are reloading. Kind of emptied the cupboards out a little bit, brought Zach Granke into town, which I don't mind one bit, but they're stocking those shelves again, folks. I love it. Brewers go out there, they get themselves Taylor, Jungman, Texas, right-handed pitcher, huge guy, 6'6". Just an absolute workhorse, a dominating pitcher. This year he was 13-0, 3.00 ERA, 
0.95 ERA, just absolute silly numbers. 116 strikeouts. Kid's a junior. He's been a workhorse his entire career. I think they got themselves a dandy at pick 12. Three picks later, pick 15, they go pitching again. Jed Bradley, Georgia Tech, a lefty, another starter. Dude can bring the heat, 92 to 97 mile per hour fastball. Uh, he's got a couple complimentary pitches. Upon reading articles about this guy, I thought it was really interesting that in one of the articles, they compared this guy to Taylor Jungman. Holy crap. So the Brewers either hit a huge home run or completely whiffed going and getting two pitchers that are very, very comparable. Go crew, keep it up. All right, here we go. What you've probably all been waiting for, the LeBron James talk. You look anywhere. It's LeBron James is shrinking in the fourth quarter. LeBron is deferring. Blah, 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 blah. The Heat are winning, folks. You look at the prior series, LeBron James single-handedly was the man. He carried them against the Celtics. He was a monster against the Bulls. And you know what? Because he sees a better matchup in the series versus the Mavs and hands it off to one of the top five players in the country, Dwayne Wade, he is shrinking in the fourth quarter. What a load. LeBron James is probably one of the smartest players in the entire world and one of the most unselfish players in the entire world. LeBron James is a consummate pro. He is that ultimate elite guy that you want on your team. He knows he has Dwayne Wade. He knows he has Chris Bosh. And he knows he doesn't have to force terrible Kobe Bryant type shots up all fourth quarter long. He lets Dwayne Wade get his. He makes the nice extra pass to Chris Bosh to hit that open jumper. LeBron, when I think of shrinking, I do not think of you. I think of that old ass dude who hops into a cold pool and then he comes out with some major shrinkage. LeBron, keep doing your thing, boy. You know what? The Heat are bringing a title home and it's happening very, very quickly. Last thing, Golden State Warriors, they go out and they hire a former point guard, 17-year vet, zero coaching experience, but hey, he's the head coach in the NBA right now, Mark Jackson. Yeah, he was an analyst. Yeah, he's real good on camera. You know what? Maybe he was a good decision maker playing in the pros. I guess we'll see how he is at game planning, managing his players, and you know what? Trying to develop young guys. Might be a bad move for Golden State. I think it's pretty risky. There are a lot of vet coaches out there. But the one thing I truly love about this, they're taking a risk. I like it. Roll the dice. What do you have to lose out there? He's got solid youth you know, at the guard position. Mark Jackson can develop those guards. He was a point guard. Did a ton of decision making his entire career. Let's see how that translates as a head coach. Not a bad move by Golden State. I like it. You rolled the dice. And you know what? Avery Johnson seemed to pan out pretty well in the NBA. Point guards are smart. They get in there. They get it done. There you have it, Spud Nation. You got any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up. Craig at thesportscoach.com or on the website or Twitter, Facebook. You know how to do it. Till next time, go Gators. We're out.